Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews. Tonight we're talking about X of Swords Destruction, Issue 1, Part 22 of 22 of X of Swords. That's right guys, we are officially done. We have the end of X of Swords. We know how it all ends. Now, the big question is, was it worth it? 22 issues, 24 if you count the prelude issues, was this giant stack of expensive paper worth it. I have to say, I wholeheartedly believe so. I thoroughly enjoyed this particular issue. I had a smile plastered across my face almost the entire time I was reading. This has so many amazing fist pump moments. It is unbelievable. I love this issue and even the stuff at the end. And once all the the uh, the heroics and the big splashy stuff ends and we get kind of the wrap up to some of the stories, even that stuff is well written and it's pretty good. Uh, even if I don't particularly care for the storylines of things like the Captain Britain Corps, it's still well done, at least in this issue. We may have had some issues uh, along the journey here in the pile that I just showed, but we are now at the destination, and now that we know where we were going at the whole time, that can maybe forgive some of the stuff that happened over here. There's some stuff that I still have issues with, but on the whole, I have really enjoyed going through X of Swords, bringing you guys my thoughts on it, and as for the issue we are about to dive into, today i love this issue probably a 9.5 out of 10 so um this is a long issue and there is a, a ton of stuff in it so this is probably going to be a long video but even with that there's probably going to be some stuff that i skip over or skim over or just brush past quicker than some of you guys may like but like i said there's a ton of stuff in there so if i do brush past something be sure to let me know what that is in the comments nicely and we can have a conversation there in it in, or in the comment section and help build and foster the community here at the channel. So guys, let's go ahead and dive into the pages. Actually, before we do, if you just jumped over here for my review for Excalibur issue 15, where I was questioning what was happening at the end of that issue, I it dawned on me and the first few pages of this issue. So we'll get that out of the way real quick. Uh, I didn't realize that Saturn 9 literally rebuilt the uh, the Captain Britain Corps across the, um, across the multi and it seems like it was based, um, it was seated with Betsy Braddock versus being seated with Brian Braddock, and that's why she was so upset about it. There's almost like this weird relationship thing that she has with Brian was partially to do with that. I'm not quite sure about all that, some of the implications between those characters, but I, I figured that out real quick when we started reading this issue. So now let's go ahead and, and dive into the pages here. And like I said, buckle in, boys and girls. This is going to be a long one. Get a drink, get your popcorn ready. Let's talk about some X-Men. So here we go. We're starting it off. In Otherworld, the Starlight Citadel at the close. All the cards have been drawn, but one. Ash on the wind, fire in the air. There are many possible draws. There is, however, only one possible outcome, and sacrifice has brought us to this. The Wheel of Fortune. Magic is fickle, but fortune was on their side. The card is drawn, and the core is is reborn the captain britain core is back no longer is there just one captain britain in the whole of the multiverse they are back and they look pretty badass rolling in there now i have not read through the original excalibur run i am pretty scant on my knowledge when it comes to the captain britain core and kind of what they represent to saturnine and all of that but i gotta admit it was pretty badass seeing them roll in here and then you've got Captain Avalon here, the former Captain Britain of Earth 616, saying, My God, look up, mutants, look up. The Captain Britain Corps has returned and is just the reinforcements that our X Men, or our uh, handful of X Men, needed as they are going about the dirty business of attacking or def trying to fight off the, the Iraqis. First major fist pump uh, moment of this entire issue. And then this next page where uh, the Iraqis realize or, uh, what's going on and then they call in their own in reinforcements. I gotta admit, I, uh, I 
finished up my review for Excalibur, and then I picked this one up, and I got to this page right here, and then I had to go eat dinner. I had to go eat dinner with my family, so I had to put the comic book down, and I knew when I was, at this moment, like, I have to put it down right now, or I won't make it to dinner. I'll have a cold plate, and my wife will be very unhappy with me. I knew that this was going to be absolutely amazing. So we've got uh, our remaining uh, horsemen uh, of Apocalypse, because, of course, Death died. Uh, Death was killed by um, uh, Storm in a previous issue actually he kind of killed himself a little bit oh that's uh that's um a bit of a nitpick there we can pass that one by so uh annihilation here says they have called down a host to a, a host to war against us they have summoned an army summon our own war and she says yes mother do you see the sign there's almost like this eye of sauron symbol here in the sky and they call forth do you see do you see uh, see what the school calls forth see what the summoners summon and then the magic down here's like all right that's not a good sign as they call forth some like cthulhu sandworm dune uh sandworm thing here with people riding on a man i was like oh this is getting into the good stuff and guys this pepe Laraz art actually i didn't even call out the creators on this one my apologies jonathan hickman and teeny howard on uh the writing with pepe Laraz as the artist god pepe Laraz, i'm so glad they saved him for the end i think he did some other issues uh among the pile but man him coming in at the end absolutely amazing so we've had our, uh, our fist pump moment yes and now we've got an oh shit moment and now we get another fist pump moment this one almost gave me goosebumps and made me a little misty eyed as we were going as i was reading through it the first time you see a cable here is broken and beaten and he asks how bad is it are we losing saturnine says yes and he's like why don't you do something and she says you say that as if all of this rests on me when it does not you forget young mutant what was set in motion cannot be stopped at the drawing this conflict was preordained you fight for love and hate salvation and death damnation and uh, eternity and none of these will be denied and then it happens he hears in his mind cyclops reaching out saying hey kiddo hang in there i'm on my way and oh this is so badass this is not quite the emotional high of the portals moment in endgame but it's probably as close as an, an event like this can get i absolutely love it so Cyclops calls out to Magic and says, "So, Captain, I take it there that I take it things are dire and the weather's looking grim." Oh, I love that line so damn much. And she says, "It ain't great, and honestly, you're cutting it pretty close. I was worried you weren't gonna make it." And he says, "Difficult people, Ileana, and complicated times. You want to kick the door open for us?" Yes. Oh my God, it's so good. This this review is just gonna be a lot of me just gushing about this book. It's just just so damn cool. <laughs> And she says, Captain, it would be my pleasure. And then she opens a portal big enough for the sword space station to come into the other world. How badass are both Cyclops and Magic in this moment? I gushed about Cyclops in uh, uh, two videos ago in X-Men issue 15. I love his uh, character in that issue. And then here we've got Magic backing him up. I love, love the one-two punch of Magic and um, and Cyclops here. So she opens the portal. This Star Destroyer style looking space station rolls in. And then um, so you hear Cyclops saying exactly what he said back in that issue. This is a simple straightforward job. We head in there to rescue our, our people. To save our friends. To save our family. And look at that Blood of X-Men rolling in. Uh, Jean says, remember, to die here is to be gone forever. We don't want to lose anyone. And Cyclops says, but if you're, uh, so if you're wondering if you should hold back or restrain yourself in any way, don't. It's win or die, so we win. Jean, you want to take it from here to me, my X-Men. God, I love that line. I need a t-shirt that just says, to me, my X-Men on it. And just these pages right here force you to stop and just appreciate the Pepe Laraz art and how detailed it is and how great the colors are. Oh my god, just looking at this one uh, right here with all of the X-Men rolling in there, I mean, like, they've got 
everyone. Of course, you got your classics like Rogue. Uh, you know, there's Cyclops, there's Beast and Bishop and all that. But like even like Gwenpool is right there, and you've got Dupe. Like fucking Dupe is in here. They managed to squeeze that little Slimer uh, <laughs> nugget in there. Oh, I absolutely love it. It's just, it's so damn good. And then, of course, you got Rogue and Gambit over here. All of the X-Men with guns and, like, a bow and arrow right here in this one. Just blowing away. Uh, Pogger Pog, just, it's so damn cool, guys. It's so damn cool. Yeah, I had some down moments in the journey, but damn, was the destination worth it. I absolutely love this book. So if that wasn't enough, we keep getting more and more things in here. Uh, first off, before we get to more reinforcements showing up, I love this conversation here between Annihilation. Uh, Annihilation and Genesis talking essentially with Apocalypse. Uh, Genesis is saying, it's so hard to fight it. Have you figured it out yet, my love? I cannot bend because it would mean a total surrender. I cannot yield because I would be yielding uh, to it. The fight is all I have left. Annihilation cannot be beaten. So she is essentially saying, the only thing that I have left in me is to continue to try and fight Annihilation. So I do not succumb to, do not yield, do not surrender to it. And Apocalypse here says, um, uh, do you not seem to understand that surrendering is not the same thing as losing? I can heal the breach. I can make us whole. I can make uh, us all whole. I can make us whole. And she says, you don't understand. I'm so tired of this fight. I am. And I just love this moment of weakness from Genesis because the entire time we've seen Genesis on the page in this uh, story arc, this massive event, she has always been the one with all of the bravado, with all of the confidence saying, no, I'm not the weak one. You are the weak one. I can beat you. You are not strong enough for this, so I'm going to take your place. And now she has this moment of vulnerability with her long lost husband saying, I'm tired. I can't do this fight anymore. And so she succumbs to Annihilation and you see Annihilation take over here and then call in some more like Elder God uh, Cthulhu bullshit over here it's getting bad but th and there's this amazing like a tit for tat here it's like that scene out of the Untouchables where um uh, Sean Connery is saying, uh, you know, God rest his soul, saying, uh, you bring a knife, or they bring a knife, you bring a gun, they put one of yours in the hospital, you put one of theirs in the morgue. I need to watch that movie again. It's an amazing movie. I love this moment here with Saturnine. I love so much about this book. I'm sure you guys are tired of me saying that at, at this point. Um, so, uh, Saturnine asks Cable what card he was he drew, and he says, the fool, and she says, yes, a fool with a sword, and only a fool would think that is what he he is actually holding and he's like oh yes duh I'm an idiot and so he calls to his parents and gets them to teleport him with magic to uh, where we saw him in his solo issue in the first half of X of Swords and they open up the portal with those like random like other dimensional aliens and just let them roll in and absolutely just wreak havoc on the battlefield oh my god i love it, it like this isn't just krakoa versus araki arako anymore like our two bands of uh our um our contestants in the tournament we've got so much other stuff going in here i absolutely uh love it and so, uh, Annihilation uh, over here is saying, you want the full meaning of a world, or the full measure of a world? Come, creature, taste my metal feast on Amanth. I will consume you. But then, you see that blue hand on the shoulder, and then Apocalypse rips the helmet, the, the helm of Annihilation off off of his wife and uh the an annihilation says you this is folly you cannot uh save you you save yourself and he says the folly is believing that is what i was trying to do and i love this panel god it's so good just let just brute force rips this it's thing off the face of his wife and just tries to hold it back as everyone is watching what's going on it Opaluna Saturnine says go on finish it and he puts it on and he becomes annihilation oh ho, ho. I love this book so damn much. It's so good. It was worth the journey of 23 issues to get to issue 24 here, including uh, the preludes. 
says, I am remade, uh, I am apocalypse, annihilation, the end of all things. And then real uh, Saturnine's right hand says, the aliens that from that other place are not just destroying the mages of Arako and Ament, they are tearing at the fabric of Otherworld itself. And she says, I don't, I can't stop it, not yet, not yet. And so... We go here to Genesis, and she says, Whoever defeats the helm acclaims the helm. Whoever wears the crown controls the land, and the helm controls them. Annihilation is saying, And now my new vessel raise my horde, summon the full might, lead them. And Apocalypse says, No. Oh, I love it. No. I'm not going to do it. He says, um, I claim it. I claim uh, I claim it, but not you. Uh, she fought to win. I don't care about winning anymore. I only want to save my people, our people. So he is taking a different tact with the Annihilation Helmet. It almost reminds me of that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where there was some weird game where Data was playing it with an alien and they have, like, like things on their fingers and they just go like this. I don't remember what the game was called or what episode it is. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments. But instead of trying to win, Data just played to stalemate. And that seems like exactly the kind of thing that Apocalypse is doing here. Genesis fought for thousands of years to, to try and win. But Apocalypse is saying, no, I'm fighting you to a figurative stalemate. I'm taking a different tact. And because he did that, something we all knew was coming Iska turns. Iska, the unbeatable, turns, and now we know who is going to win. She says, here, what's that? It almost feels like, uh, and she says, they say, Iska, the unbeaten, she's turned. We cannot win. I love it. We all knew that was coming, and just to see it come right after this moment where Apocalypse changes tact with um, Annihilation, just so, so damn good. And then Apocalypse turns and surrenders to Saturnine, and she uh, she says, fine, it's done, and she gets on to Shogo the dragon, because of course she does, runs out there, uses his dragon fire to, like, sweep the battlefield clean, amazing that the, you know, Dragon Shogo plays a part in this whole uh, damn thing. And so now that Apocalypse has surrendered, uh, she goes up to him and says, um, uh, and let's settle all accounts uh, for those uh, who we, uh, for those we do. Um, are, are you sure you want to surrender? After all, there's an entire multiverse to conquer all those worlds to annihilate. And Apocalypse says, yes, we're done here. And Annihilation says, no, never. And Saturnine is just like, <sighs> May I? And so she takes the helmet off and says, Nothing changes in regard to what's required. Whoever wields the helm controls the world, and the world most certainly does need controlling. Uh, but this will just make it more manageable. It's still corrupting, of course, there's no satisfying that appetite, uh, but at least it won't have direct dominion over the wielder. So she turns it into a staff. Absolutely uh, love it. Uh, she says down here, Otherworld stands triumphant. Krokoa survives. Survives. Uh, Arako, a vassal of Amenth, yields, but I am troubled by your precocious nature. I love this from Wolverine says, if there's something else you want, we ain't got much left in the tank. I, oh, I dig it. Now, she says something here. Uh, she says, as a show of faith, you guys need to send an emissary, essentially, from each side to the other side. And I know I'm making a lot of movie references, but if you guys aren't watching uh, the current season of Fargo, that plays a big role where there's the two warring uh, crime families in this small town, and they switch children, like the leaders of the gangs, each send their child to the other side to be essentially raised by the other one as a show of good faith and that they're not going to war. So that's essentially what Saturnine is setting up here. So um, uh, uh, Apocalypse and Genesis each get to pick a mutant that goes to the other side. Of course, Genesis picks her long-lost love, Apocalypse. But then the one of the coolest moments here is that the mutant that uh, Apocalypse sends back to Krakoa is Arako. I just got goosebumps saying that. It's amazing. He makes the island whole, uh, Okara. He makes Okara whole again just the whole thing has been for that and i absolutely love it it is so damn gum even saturnine says something about it she says that wasn't in the cards apocalypse nicely done even she didn't see that coming absolutely uh, amazing 
So as the X-Men are leaving, they ask Apocalypse if there's anything he wants to say to uh, prof the Professor or uh, Magneto. And he says, just tell them one thing, that I will see them again someday. Oh, I love that. Love it so much. And he walks with his uh, arm around his wife, surrounded by his three surviving children, into the uh, back into the other world. Oh, it's so damn good. Uh, next couple pages here are just kind of uh, recapping where the swords are left off. Some some interesting nuggets about what might uh, come later on in there. We'll get into that here, I'm sure. We'll see what, what comes of that eventually. Then we've got the Captain uh, Britain Corps Reformed. It says uh, Betsy is still unaccounted for, and she is Captain Britain Prime, so she is the the one that was used to to seed all of these new Captain Britons across the multiverse and got a list of them there. There might be some references um, in there that are lost on me because, again, I'm not too up on my ex, uh, um, Excalibur knowledge, but I'm sure some eagle-eyed fan out there is picking up a uh, Easter egg or two in there. So um, now that it's all said and done, I love this conversation between Real and uh, Saturnine. Uh, she says there are uh, uh, not uh, this, after all, is the multiverse, and one must accept a certain amount of randomness when ruling otherworld but something but some signs are impossible not to read real was asking is like did you know what was going to happen or like was this all just like a bunch of bullshit and like it all ended up uh, like all's well that ends well and she says uh, husband and wife would be pitted against each other to be reunited at no small cost as would mother and child the tenth sword would descend from heaven only to return at the dawn of a new age the ninth world would be returned to its uh, uh, sword would be returned to its rightful home and deep in the rumbling earth while the goddess ter uh, turns her eyes to the stars uh, I saw that the mutant council would break the first two cracks in that firmament of course these are all things that concern me little, if also, you know, you got Shogo and Jubilee, you got the sword battle station uh, showing up, or the space station, Storm kind of wrapping up things with Wakanda there, but this is maybe the one of the most interesting uh, down here, the first cracks in the firmament that is the nation of Krakoa, there when all of this started, when the House of X and Powers of Ten was going on, one of the big questions would be, how does this end? Because Marvel's Merry Mutants can never really have a happy ending so how does this go down how does it end how does it all come crumbling down and well it seems we may have the beginning of our answer here so we will definitely see what comes of that because a lot of the quiet council members gave up their seats to go uh into other worlds so we'll have to see what fallout from from that comes mentions the gate in uh, avalon as it now it is the sole means of transportation between or teleportation between other world and and earth so we'll see what comes of that and then there's some other implications here just about some goings on within uh other world itself and then, of course, finally, the Captain and Britain Corps reformed, and you can see them all lined up here, and Saturnine Triumphant, as she says down here, uh, the white light of both fair and foul kingdoms and the eternal seat of the Starlight Citadel, who in her dominion had won everything she had ever needed, but not the one true thing that she wanted. Long may she reign. So she got the Britain Corps back, but she didn't get Brian himself back. So guys, that is the end of what has been an absolutely amazing journey like i've said we've had some ups and downs along the way but i think the destination was worth the journey and we had a lot of fun in the journey along the way so guys i would love to hear your thoughts about this story arc as a whole and this last issue in the comments down below guys thank you so much for watching this video thank you for watching all of the other videos here at the channel yesterday we broke 2,000 subscribers so thank you guys for that so so much but if you're not subscribed please add to that number add b2001 or 2002 whatever we're at by the time that you're watching this i appreciate you guys so much i may not say it all the time but i definitely appreciate you guys thank you guys for watching thank you for your support of the channel and baron with me as we go through this comic in this series so leave those comments and opinions down in the comments down below subscribe if you're not hit that notification bell the like button all those youtube things we got to talk about and until next time see you at the comic shop